Well, the one that made me laugh was, of course, tell me, Doctor, how bad are my injuries? <laughs> yes. I have to say that I really did. But I loved all the lines, really. Yeah. And, and of course, there's the iconic line at the end. Of course. Which you're going to ask me to do now, aren't you? I was, I was. Uh, okay, well, it's all still waiting for you. The fields of Trenzalore, the fall of the 11th, and the question. The first question that must never be answered. Hidden in plain sight. The question you've been running from all your life. Doctor who? Doctor who? Doctor who? Well, who? Hey. Personal private performance. Hey. 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 Um, I have to say, I do enjoy doing that. And because yes. Stephen Moffat has given me a lovely, perfect line for conventions. Of course. But because at some conventions, we are actually asked to go and do a hello, here we are opening yes. ceremony and then a closing ceremony right so what better line to close the ceremony superb yes. and um, what do you think of the casting of Peter Capaldi as the Doctor and, and do you hope to work with him the answer is brilliant and yes <laughs> no, I've been a fan of Peter Capaldi's for years I've, been in, I've seen him on stage do both comedy oh. and drama so I know what he can do and after all he's, a, he's an Oscar winning director Wow, a BAFTA yeah. winning actor, an award winning yes. writer in his own right. Yeah. So I think we've got something very special coming, and absolutely, I'd love the idea of going to head to head with uh, Capone. Uh -huh. No pun intended, of course. <laughs> no, it'd be wonderful. Oh, superb. Uh, what do you think have been the biggest changes in TV and show business in the years you've been working? Well, as an actor trying to find work. Mm. Right. Well, when I first started out, generally, Mm. which means not always. Mm. Generally, you'd apply for a job, or your agent would apply for a job for you, and you'd be a, one of a handful of people that would go and meet the director and the producer, mm. and you would have a chat, mm. and you would meet, come and meet in a room like this, mm. or, or, or an office, and have a chat. Occasionally, they would ask you to read something from the script, that they've gone, but they don't. They didn't actually send it to you to learn. Right. Uh, but the places like the National Theatre and a few like that would say, "Can you come along with two pieces?" Uh, oh, whereas yeah. now, today, mm. uh, you're sent a script at very short notice mm. and expected to learn it overnight, and you could be one of fifty people being considered. Yeah, that's the main thing. Um, uh, for me, I'm very lucky that since being in Doctor Who, I'm sort of my availability is checked more often yeah. than actually having to go for an audition. But I still occasionally have to go for an audition, uh, and uh, and and it's quite right too, you mm. know, because it keeps you on your toes. Yeah. And furthermore, I don't always get the job. <gasps> Can you imagine? I don't get a job. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> um, so, uh, yes, because you've got this bubble of everybody uh, massaging your ego when you go off to conventions and mm -hmm. things, and then you have to go off for an audition. And, uh, yeah. and the other thing, uh, you know, 30 years ago, if you didn't get the job, you would get a nice letter from someone saying, thank you for coming along, uh, very right. nice to see you, but on this occasion. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> whereas now, you're lucky if you hear anything. So, if you don't hear anything, it means you haven't got the job, so you move on. So, uh -huh. from that, I built my brain to say I've done an audition did I like it yes did I feel I did okay yes I'm happy with what I did move on uh, if you're yeah. not happy with what you've done yourself then analyze it why didn't you like what you did mm. and what could you have done to prevent you not liking what you did right and yeah. that's it so and, um, and it, a lot of it is a lottery you know a, a lot is a because uh, I consider myself hugely um, lucky, really. Mm. For, for example, with Doctor Who, Lottery One is that Moffat wrote something for a fat actor. Right. Right? Okay. Lottery Two is um, Andy Pryor, the casting director, has my agent on his list. Oh, I do a project. I thought I switched it off. No, 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 carry on, carry on. <laughs> Doreen Moldovar, can I help you? <laughs> what were we talking about? Yes, I was talking about luck. Mm. Because um, your agent has to be registered with the casting director, and the casting director will only register. It's the casting director that registers your agent. Right, okay. Right. So, um, <clears throat> so Andy Pryor called me in. So that's another bit of the lottery. 
and there were seven other Roly Poly actors they saw. And mm. so the next bit of luck was I was the one that was chosen. Uh -huh. And then the final bit of luck is that Dora was turned out to be a character that the fans adore. Yeah. And I literally get to travel the world. Yeah. And as a result of it now, um, uh, you know, some TV companies just pick up the phone and say, is Simon available, can you do these dates? Okay. And sometimes I've not been able to, <gasps> you know, because I'm doing something else. You know, but, uh, and um, I mean, one of the big things is I've been encouraged to do a UK tour of my mm -hmm. one-man show. Indeed. Yes. Yes. My Dalek has a puncture. Will be travelling <laughs> the UK from April two thousand and fourteen. <laughs> I love that title. Yeah, I'll tell you. I'll tell you all about that title when you come and see the show. Check my website, fisherbecker.info. That's my. That's my. That's my fee. I was able to plug my site. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, uh, if you could go back in time and work with a classic series doctor, which would you choose? Patrick Trout. Patrick Trout, and that's your... Well, well to be honest, all of them. Uh, okay. <laughs> absolutely. But Patrick Trout is my doctor. When people say, who's your favourite? Yeah. I don't say he's my favourite, but he's my doctor. Yeah. And Matt Smith is my special doctor. Of course. So, uh, but uh, no, to work with all, oh, I would have loved to have been actually with William Hartnell and everything oh, on the first episode. Yeah. To be, to be actually, it's, I think um, William Russell's very lucky. Yeah. Yeah, he's celebrating 50 years. Can you imagine doing something today wow. that you will be invited to in 50 years' time to celebrate? It's yeah. extraordinary. That, extraordinary. That's that's pretty and the whole history of it though, they never, very nearly didn't get on air yeah and for several weeks it, there was the, is it going to yeah. keep going you know but there you go yeah but nothing's changed in that sense mm. nothing's changed at all people make a pilot for a comedy series mm. and you know fingers and toes crossed it'll be commissioned it can be commissioned to go to series but there's no guarantee it'll be aired mm. but uh, there you go yeah yeah. But uh, that's life. That's what people say. <laughs> okay, and um, you're planning a one-man show. <laughs> ah, I preempted your question. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what is it about, and what does it entail? Well, it, it really the the what do we call it? The acorn of the idea um, it came from the conventions uh, because we do what they call panels, where yeah. we're interviewed. And normally, it's uh, all the Doctor Who actors who are at the convention sit in a row and we're all asked different questions and then questions are beckoned from the floor. Mm. Um, but occasionally, I've been asked to do one by myself. Ah, okay. uh, and on one or two occasions, not only was I asked to do one by myself, but the person who was going to interview me didn't turn up. Oh. So I was just told, well, here's the empty stage, <laughs> wow. and there are the lions. <laughs> so really so, yeah. thrown into the deep end That's it. one man. Uh, yeah. So um, I came up with this idea where, of, of, well, if there's, not a, if there's not an interviewer, I'll have a slideshow of pictures. Okay. And those pictures could be something to stimulate me to talk about different things. Uh, and also, there are the main questions I'm asked are, uh, why and how did you become an actor? Mm -hmm. I'd love to be an actor. What do I have to do? Mm. Uh, do you bring anything of yourself to Dorian? Ah. And Dorian is such a complicated character. Mm. How is it you're able to play such a complicated character? Wow. And, those are the four. and that's the essence of uh, my Dalek as a puncture. And it sort of tells the story of me, mm. uh, my life leading up to the point of when I'm... Uh, Offered to Dorian. So, uh, I've been very lucky. I've had Hilarious, but it's only because mm -hmm. Hilarious, so funny, I nearly wet myself, or the phrase is used. Mm -hmm. But it's because people laugh even when I'm being very, very serious, so it must be the way I speak. <laughs> That's ah. what I said. But it is, there's an educational thing, and it's ideal for, uh, being the sci fi fans will love it, and it's ideal for anyone who's wanted to become a performer of any kind let alone an actor. So I talk about CVs and, uh, mm. and show reels and voice tapes and casting directors, agents and directors. So, uh, but in, um, uh, as a raconteur, and there's, an, there's a Q&A session so people can ask whatever questions they like. And uh, I went, I did the tour, first tour, down in Australia, 
mm. and New Zealand, and then I've done some parts of, of America as well. Huge response, huge, yeah. huge, huge. And that's what's prompted me to put on this tour. And as I said, from April 2014. Ah, yeah. nothing like a good plug. Yeah. And, um, uh, oh, what do you find more challenging, writing and preparing your own uh, work or learning scripts and taking direction? Well, they're different disciplines and they've got mm. their own challenges. I know that sounds obvious, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's exactly that. Um, I, um, so the question was, which do I find more difficult? Yeah. I think making up your own stuff. Mm. The ideas are very good, I mean, very mm. easy to come up with. Because mm. most of my ideas come from things I observe in yeah. life, you see. Uh, but it's finding a way of sewing it all together so it's all smooth. Mm. And uh, not gobbledygooky. That's quite difficult, mm. and takes a bit of time and thought process, and lots of scribbling out and chucking it away, and mm -hmm. then going banging your head against the wall, going, "I can't do this. Why did I start?" You know. So the way you force yourself to do it is you set yourself a date, and th and then you find, you then find because you've got to get this done by the first of January. Yeah. Then uh, that helps you focus more when you get something done. Just go for it. Uh -huh. And don't be afraid if you make a mistake. Right. I, yeah. think, what, I think what, what uh, puts most people off is that they're afraid of making a mistake. But there's no harm in making a mistake, especially if you learn from it. And who is it who's judging you? Yeah. You know, most of the people who criticise you well, wouldn't even be able to start what you've tried to do. Mm. Uh, but do take valuable uh, comments from people who are experienced in what you're trying to do. Mm. But um, most other people got no idea. It makes me laugh. There's a lot of friends I've got who got who um, are not in the entertainment industry at all, and then they but they judge you. Mm. They judge you, right? But no knowledge at all, mm -hmm. and yet I don't judge them because they're a crap doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. So that was uh, that was all the questions. So oh, was it all the questions? Oh. I know you thought fifteen was a lot. Well, yes, we I did. Rattled, <laughs> we rattled through that quite quickly. Okay. Um, I, did, I, did, I suppose I could improvise a couple more. Yeah, just I, just chat away. Yeah, I mean, um, I would say one thing is, I suppose, of course, one of the great things about um, obviously, well, for one thing, you've got a ready-made audience, so that's that's sort of helpful. But also, of course, the go, doing the convention circuit and things, you keep in contact with other stars of Doctor Who. It did always strike me that there was a great chemistry, particularly in A Good Man Goes to War, that there was such a wonderful chemistry between you all. And yes, but that was before I started doing conventions. Yeah. Um, no, but act, actors generally um, have learned that they've got to get on with people quickly. Right. Because, for example, if you're, if you're uh, booked to appear in a play, mm. you have a limited amount of time to rehearse. Yeah. So you don't have the luxury of three months to get to know someone. Mm. So as actors, we very quickly get to know people. Okay. And, and then when you find yourselves in another environment, like for example, you've got a job working in an office, yeah. because you are quick at getting to know people, uh, some other people find that a bit, ooh, you know, a bit odd. Yeah. But you've got to get used to that. Okay, so is it very much if you meet, say, Matt Smith or, or, or someone like that, you, you is, it, is it instantly kind of joy, like, like meeting an old friend? Well, it is. I mean, <coughs> I was very scared initially because I was a fan of Doctor Who. Mm -hmm. So when I went for the read-through of a Pandorica Opens, I was, I went into the, uh, the read-through and uh, you go in and there's this um, table mm -hmm. set out boardroom style and... Uh, at each chair there's an A4 size piece of paper with your name written on it and I found that on my right hand side there was Nicholas Briggs who's the voice of the yes. Cybermen and the Daleks and then on my left hand side there's Alex Kingston Wow. and then next to Alex there was Matt Smith Wow. and uh, I got there early and Nick Briggs was there so I got chatting to him there's a tap on my shoulder I turn around and it's Matt Smith <laughs> and he went hello I'm Matt <laughs> so instantly Make right. Contact, yeah. You know, and uh, and that's exactly how we do it. Whereas you find people uh, seeing some other areas might find it difficult to do that initially. Mm. But and we're used to doing it all the time. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, if you wrote an episode of Doctor Who, what would that be like? Ooh. Uh, what would I have? 
And he said, I'd, I'd have a, uh, a bit of intrigue. Okay. I'd, uh, they said, let me think. I would have Dorian, naturally. Mm -hmm. I think Dorian, the Doctor, and Captain Jack. And maybe they're in a void somewhere and they're not too sure where they are. So the whole oh. episode is building around the relationship between the three of them and learning more how they interact with each other. Okay. And finding out a few more secrets. Mm hmm. And then suddenly Captain Jack finds a hole in the void and he unzips it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't know. Uh -huh. yeah. The files of John Bowen's have just stayed. Well, there we go. That would, it would be great, yes, because I'd love to work with Captain Jack as well. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine Captain Jack, Dora, and the Doctor? It yeah. would be a boot. It certainly yeah. would. And um, so, um, thank you very much for joining us, Simon. Well, thank you very much indeed. And thank you most gloriously for my <laughs> cholesterol levels to increase. <laughs>